Hello, dears, and welcome to Al-Husseini Virtual Lab, Pathology Talks, Tips, and Practical Tips. Today, I'm going to show you how to interpret a case of medulloblastoma, in particular, wind-activated medulloblastoma. So this is a nine-year-old male patient who was diagnosed previously with medulloblastoma, and this is a recurrent tumor in the posterior fossa at the site of the previous tumor. And as you can see, this is an extremely cellular tumor, small rounded blue cell tumor, although it is the cells are not really very small. And I will show you this in a minute, how to, uh, to interpret the size of the tumor cells. What we can see is uh, that it is blue in color. It's really punctated with large number of apoptoses. And within the central nervous system, I find uh, in practice apoptoses really very helpful to support that the tumor is of higher grade. So whenever we start to see apoptosis, especially easily discernible apoptosis, this indicates an aggressive type of a tumor. And within the context of medulloblastoma, I should start to think about the anaplastic medulloblastoma. Another uh, field in the tumor, and I start to see kind of a spindling of the tumor cell in nuclei. Again, this can be seen in medulloblastoma in general, but it should kind of alert me that I might be dealing with anaplastic large cell medulloblastoma and another field. The cells are really large and we have mitosis and we have apoptosis. Now, how to judge really the size of the tumor cells in the context of large cell anaplastic medulloblastoma in particular? We have to find a reference and our reference would be a red blood cell. So, uh, and normally, the medulloblastoma cells would be less than three times the size of an RBC. If I start to see tumor cells that are three, uh, three times the size of an RBC or more, these are the large cell usually associated with anaplasia, anaplastic medulloblastoma. So if I pick any of those cells and compare the size to the red blood cells, it is at least three times the size of an RBC. This one, this one, this one, and so on, this one, and so on, and so forth. And again, there is the apoptosis, an excellent clue. So all together, this case by morphology would be consistent with diffuse large cell, uh, uh, diffuse anaplastic large cell medulloblastoma. Why have I used the term diffuse? Because as you move from one field to the other, on low power magnification, you tend to see the same appearance of the tumor cells. There isn't focality within uh, the tumor cells. So everywhere, all the slides that were examined showed the large tumor cell size, as well as sometimes the prominent nucleoli, which is an excellent clue for large cell in medulloblastoma. Now, this is for the histology. What about the immunohistochemistry and what about the surrogate markers in order to support the molecular subgrouping for medulloblastoma. And this is synaptophysin. Synaptophysin tends to be positive in medulloblastoma. But the pattern of positivity is different actually between the different subtypes, the histologic subtypes. In large cell anaplastic medulloblastoma, you tend to see this dot-like cytoplasmic staining, very characteristic. And this is on high power magnification, that dot-like cytoplasmic staining. It is supportive that what I'm looking at is large cell anaplastic medulloblastoma, another field with dot like cytoplasmic staining for uh, synaptophysin in medulloblastoma, which means that this is really in support that the tumor is large cell anaplastic medulloblastoma. Next is P53. And with P53, remember what we need is a strong diffuse cytoplasmic staining in 50% or more of a tumor cell nuclei in the context of CNS tumors. I'm not talking about colonic or gynecological malignancies. Remember, we're talking about CNS tumors and in particular about embryonal tumors, medulloblastoma. So this positivity is actually, um, uh, would be interpreted as abnormal slash mutant. 
And what is really the beauty of P53 for me as well is that it highlighted the anaplasia. So if you look at the nuclei, they are really ugly looking and large and anaplastic. And this is really what I do usually with immunohistochemical stains. So I interpret the immunohistochemical stain for the purpose for which I ordered the stain for, the P53, the synaptophysin. But then I look at the specific patterns or other collateral use for the immune stain. And in this case, with the P53, I used it also to confirm that the cells are really big. We don't have red blood cells here to compare to. So what would I compare the size with? The endothelial cells. So this is the endothelium, this is a blood vessel, and these are the endothelium. And again, this tumor cell is like 10 times the size of the endothelium. This one is a three times, and so on and so forth. So P53 is a mutant and helped me to confirm the anaplastic large cell morphology or histology for this tumor. Chi 67 is extremely high. And again, I use it frequently in medulloblastoma. In the classical non-anaplastic medulloblastoma, usually it will be in the range of 20 to 30 percent. But in anaplastic medulloblastoma, it's usually in the range of 60, 70, or sometimes more percent. Because of that, I again use it to support the diagnosis of anaplasia. Now into the surrogate markers, beta catenin should be done on all medulloblastoma in order to try to subgroup medulloblastoma into, in particular, the wind type medulloblastoma. Now, with the, the issue with the beta catenin, it is that in in practice, it's really difficult to interpret because normally it would stay. And this is this focus shows the normal staining pattern. This is non-mutant, the membranous cytoplasmic staining pattern. And if I encounter a tumor showing only this pattern, I would report it as beta catenin shows uh, uh, membranous slash cytoplasmic staining between the brackets non-mutant. What is the mutant beta catenin? Is that these blue, uh, these a uh, uh, brown colored, the brown colored uh, nuclei? Now on high power magnification, and you have to go on high power magnification to sort out this dilemma whether the beta catenin is shows a uh, nuclear positivity, thus a mutant status. And again, we have to find a reference. The reference is other tumor cells or endothelial cells that are non-mutant and the color is blue. In comparison, this is not a blue, this is not a blue. This tumor cell shows only membranous and cytoplasmic, and the nucleus is a blue. This is a blue, but definitely this one is not a blue. Definitely this one is not a blue. This is a brown. So this is the way, actually, the way I interpret the beta catenin. And this one, again, is a brown. This one is a brown, and so on and so forth. So this case in particular, I know that this is the way to interpret because this is the the way that we initially reported it and the case was sent for subgrouping and it came back as went activated. So we have a molecular confirmation that our immunohistochemistry is working properly. So these are again non-mutant blue nuclei while this group is a mutant because I cannot really discern, I cannot separate the nucleus from the rest of the cytoplasm and the cell membrane. This is the way to interpret beta catenin. Now, another useful immunohistochemical stain that uh, um, I started to use uh, routinely is filamin A. And filamin A is kind of a replacement really for YAP1 in particular. It shows diffuse cytoplasmic staining in wind and SHH activated medulloblastoma while it's negative in group three and group four. So this this stain is positive. It's really easy to, to perform and easy to interpret. I did not really succeed until now in um, uh, using GAB1 and YAB1 at our laboratory. So put together, 
filamin A means that this uh, medulloblastoma is of Wnt or SHH subgroup and beta, beta catenin immunohistochemistry, if you know how to interpret it, would support the diagnosis of Wnt activated medulloblastoma. So, so to summarize, this case is a recurrent medulloblastoma, Wnt activated CNSWHO grade four. It shows anaplastic Larsen uh, uh, histology. It shows P53 positivity, which is considered to be abnormal expression slash mutant. It does not mean this is somatic or germline. We have to test for this in particular in another step. It shows positive nuclear staining for beta catenin, which can be focal or diffuse, and it can be accepted really. The cutoff, some papers mention 10% cutoff for a nuclei. In my experience, when beta catenin and nuclear positivity is present in any proportion, it really correlates very well with a molecular wind subgrouping. And then the beautiful filament A shows diffuse cytoplasmic staining in a tumor cell nuclei. One additional tip that I think would be really helpful to support the diagnosis of the wind uh, activated subgroup of medulloblastoma is to go back and look at radiology. Wind, in particular, wind activated medulloblastomas tend to arise in the cerebellar midline, generally in close proximity or sometimes even arising from the brainstem, and they can extend to the CT angle, and frequently they show MRI enhancement. So put together, if we put, put the pathology and the radiology, if you have a good radiologist that you can communicate with and correlate your findings with, really you can come up with a solid diagnosis of wind activated medulloblastoma, even without uh, having to do the subgrouping if you don't have the access to subgrouping. I hope you find this tip useful in your daily practice. Thank you.